My name is Hans Benning. I'm a violin maker and I started in 1962 when I attended the violin making school in Mittenwald, Germany. After all these years, I'm still in the same profession, repair and make and restoration of violins, violas and cellos. It was many years ago, a man came into our store, into our shop, long trench coat, hat on, dark glasses, and he asked if he wanted to talk to me. I walked out of the workshop into the front, he took his glasses off, and then I recognized this is Yasha Heifetz. I had no idea beforehand, but once he took his glasses and his hat off, uh, it was quite a surprise because he's uh, obviously a very well-known person all over the world in the violin playing and the music business. He came into the shop and looked around and he said, I, wanna, I want you to come to my house and work on my instrument. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't do that. I have all my tools and all my equipment right here in the shop and if you're willing to bring it on, your instrument on down here, I'll be very glad to help you and assist you. He looked at me rather strange, and uh, well, that's just the way it was, and because I cannot work on instruments on a kitchen table somewhere. He looked around some more, and then he walked up. And then all of a sudden it really hit me. I'd say, Hans, here's the greatest violinist of the world. He came to work and asked you to work on his Guarneri del Chasey, and you turned him down. I said, well, oh well, it's just the way it is. And uh, there's nothing I could do about it. I couldn't call him up or anything. I just accepted it the way it was. It was but a, a few days later, a young lady with Mr. Heifetz came back to the shop. Uh, the young lady's name I learned later on was Ika Agus, his assistant for many years, and Mr. Heifetz brought his Guneri in and told me exactly what he had in mind for me to do. and. Uh, Ever since then, it's been a very, very great relationship with him. He had, and I appreciated that very much, because to take a valuable instrument to somebody, he could have gone anywhere in the world and had service done, but he trusted me, and I worked for Mr. Heifetz for a good 15 years. Eventually, I did go to his house because he had an accident he could not move to very well, made some minor adjustments, or Ica Agus brought the instrument down here. Over the years, we redeveloped uh, really a great relationship besides the service on violins. We had lunch together, we had dinner together, we played ping pong, we made mustard together. And he shared, he shared a lot of, a lot of things with me. And one day he even said, you know, when I first came into your shop, I really appreciated that you stood up for yourself and did not compromise your work ethics and that you didn't. So many people, they compromise and then something gets lost. After all these years, I was privileged to, after Mr. Heifetz passed away, I was privileged to construct uh, the auction of all of his musical instruments and accessories and so forth. And he was a, uh, I knew him better than a lot of other people because obviously his violin and his music was very, very personal to him and I could tell many strange anecdotes of what happened over the years. One day he came in and picked up his violin. I had to do some adjustment. He just walked by the bow rack, 
picked up a bow, played ten notes on and he says, it's fine. And he looked at the bow, oh, that's a cello bow. Okay, so no excuses, he could make it sound any which way. And that's the way he also demonstrated it with his students, because he had a little half-size bow where he taught the, the students, don't just play half the bow, play a whole bow. And uh, there were other more serious comments that we shared over the years. One day he told me, he said, Hans, it is very lonely on the top and there's a high price to pay to get there. He was a very deep thinking man, very appreciative of what I did, that I kept this instrument in good shape, and uh, it really has made a difference in my life that a man of his caliber had the confidence to trust his most valuable possession to me to maintain and to keep up. When you have an instrument like Mr. Heifetz, uh, his Guneri mostly, uh, these very beautiful instruments do take maintenance. Edges open up that have to be glued, fingerboards need to be straightened and dressed. He had uh, quite a few very fine bows and uh, he, he used certain bows for certain music. He used a certain bow for teaching, so that he, were, he was very particular, extremely particular. One funny thing is, whenever he brought a bow in to have it rehaired, he always asked me for a pair of scissors, and he cut the hair out. I asked him one day, I said, why do you do that? Well, I want to make sure I get new hair and not the old hair washed. I said, okay, well, here's the scissors. As far as I observed in the 15 years, he was a perfectionist. He was very definitely set in his ways. He would not, I observed that in classes, master classes, you know, he would not allow any of his students to come up with a shoulder rest and uh, yes he was very very particular but then the other side that I got to know see I had nothing that I wanted from him I didn't want his opinion I didn't want his teaching or his interpretation he came to me because he trusted me and he said several times, he said, I really appreciate our relationship. You're more interested in the instrument than you are in me. And I said, well, it is my privilege and duty really to keep these fine old instruments for the next generation. I have the privilege to work on it. You have the privilege to play on it. To me, it is a, it's a great privilege and one of my teachers, Carl Becker Sr., I worked with him for a summer years ago, said, Hans, every instrument you look at, you can learn something from it. And every instrument that I see, I study it and see, how did he do this? Some things I like and say, oh, my next instrument, I would like to do it. Or, I say, no, I would never do it that way. So they, we learn from them. And the beautiful part on these old instruments really is, there's a story to them. There's a history to them. Who played them? Where did they play? And uh, after Mr. Heifetz passed away a year later, they had a memorial concert up in San Francisco. And it was most interesting to hear uh, the same violin, the same music, the same orchestra, and the instrument sounded totally different. It's a skill, it's a skill of the player to find out what the instrument has and what you can do 
with it. Many people could not play the strings that he used to use, but he made it sound gorgeous. <laughs>